Playing video games that are difficult by design is all well and good, but things get really interesting when you're playing a game that sneakily puts in elements that result in making things harder for yourself. Whether that's because of specific gameplay choices, or hidden underlying mechanics, or even consequences of seemingly unrelated actions. There have been a number of games over the years that have done exactly that, and here we're going to talk about a few of them. A quick note before we move forward. Please consider subscribing and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. And while you're at it, please click like if you enjoyed this video. It really helps us out. With that out of the way, let's begin. Spec Ops Stealth Patrol Swap to Difficulties A perfect example of how the lack of post-launch patches, which is something we now take for granted, could ruin a game. Its easy, normal, and hard difficulties were dubbed Private, Corporal, and Sergeant, respectively. Only, in the game itself, Private and Sergeant were, for whatever reason, swapped. This meant that people who wanted to play the game on the easiest difficulty were unknowingly playing it on the hardest, wondering all the while just why things were as frustratingly difficult as they were. Spec Ops Stealth Patrol wasn't exactly the best of games as it is, and this did it no favors. Mega Man 9 – Playing as Proto Man Mega Man 9, like any other game in the series, can be extremely challenging as it is. But if for some reason you want to make things even more difficult, playing as Proto Man is the way to go. No store and bolts, no support items, taking double damage, Proto Man is crippled by no shortage of things, making him the ultimate hard mode in an already challenging game. Left 4 Dead Adaptive Difficulty Adaptive difficulty has been used in quite a few games over the years, but Left 4 Dead is probably one of the most notable instances. The Left 4 Dead games grow progressively more challenging as you play more, with each new wave throwing hordes of continuously more terrifying monsters at you. But if the game decides that you're doing too well, it'll make things even harder, with everything from enemy spawn points to ammo and health pickups becoming more challenging as a result. Fallout 4 Playing with Low Intelligence Investing into stats to tailor to your playstyle is the bread and butter of the role-playing genre, and that is of course true for Fallout 4 as well. At the same time though, not investing in the intelligence stats even a little bit can also make things a bit harder for you. If you play with a low intelligence stat, not only will your character be unable to comprehend quest objectives or even what NPCs are saying to them, you'll also get very limited and hilariously stupid dialogue options. Demon Souls World Tendency Demon Souls is, by design, a game with crushing difficulty, so of course From Software and later Bluepoint Games incorporated a mechanic that punished you even further if you weren't doing too well. The World Tendency system keeps ratcheting up the difficulty every time you die, which means that the more you succumb to the game's challenge and keep dying, the more challenging the game gets. Make sure you play in Soul Form with the Kling Ring equipped if you want to make things a little easier on yourself. Deus Ex Human Revolution – The Free Upgrade At a certain point in Deus Ex Human Revolution, Jensen will find that his augmentations are acting out, at which point he's offered a free upgrade. Taking it might sound like a good idea, but the decision does come back to bite you later on, when during a boss fight, Zhao Yunru disables those augmentations courtesy of the upgrade installed into them. That of course means that while you're fighting the boss, your HUD gets all messed up and you no longer have access to information such as your health, ammo, and radar. Pokemon Red and Blue – Picking Charmander There's no correct answer to which is the best starter Pokemon. Just kidding, it's actually Charmander because he turns into a freaking fire-breathing dragon, although Blastoise is no slouch either. But though the payoff is excellent, things aren't too easy in the beginning. The first gym in Pokemon Red and Blue is a rock gym, while the second one is a water gym, and the fire type Charmander is weak against both of those types. Picking Charmander as your starter then means making the first few hours of your journey pretty challenging, unless you have a well-balanced party and do not rely on just one single Pokemon. The Legend of Zelda – Naming Your File Zelda Beating The Legend of Zelda once unlocks the second quest mode, which remixes the entire game to make things significantly more challenging. But there's another way to do that, though it's not so secret anymore, if way back in the 80s you decided to name your game file Zelda before beginning the game, you automatically started the second quest. Dungeon locations are rearranged, item locations are changed, and often you even come across multiple boss enemies within a single dungeon. Resident Evil – Playing as Chris Redfield 
The original Resident Evil, and its remake, of course, lets players choose who they want to play as between Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. But if you want to make things a little easier for yourself, Jill is definitely the way to go. Chris has a smaller inventory, which is a big deal in a game such as this one. But there are other disadvantages to playing as him as well. Unlike Jill, he doesn't have a lockpick, and he doesn't start the game with a handgun either. Meanwhile, certain puzzles are also a bit more complicated. For instance, you need to find the broken shotgun first if you want to get the shotgun in your arsenal. Whereas with Jill, you can just grab the weapon and have Barry save you from turning into a Jill sandwich. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice Ringing the Demon Bell As if Sekiro Shadows Die Twice wasn't hard enough as it is, From Software, being From Software, decided to put the freaking Demon Bell in there for people to make it even harder for themselves. Ringing the Demon Bell is a bit of a risk-reward thing, since it results in enemies that are even harder to kill, but with the promise of even better rewards. The problem is that that isn't perfectly clear when you're actually ringing the bell. By the time you realize what you've done, it's already too late. Mario Kart Item Balancing Mario Kart is a series that thrives on chaos and unpredictability, and almost every single one of its mechanics is built around that approach. For instance, if you're playing well and find yourself in higher positions, the lower-placed characters will begin getting their hands on much more dangerous items to attack you with, from turning into rockets to hitting you with the dreaded blue shell. Of course, conversely, you also get better items if you're not doing so well yourself, so at least it strikes that balance. Final Fantasy VIII – Grinding and Level Scaling Grinding is a time-honored tradition in JRPGs, but Final Fantasy VIII, in its infinite wisdom, decides to punish you for it. How? Well, with level scaling, and perhaps one of the worst examples of level scaling in a video game. Because not only do the enemies in the game get more powerful as you level up, they actually progress at a faster rate than you. So if you think grinding to beat a particularly powerful boss is going to help you, think again, you're only making that boss even more powerful. Metal Gear Solid V – Taking Headshots Artificial intelligence can make or break a stealth game, and Metal Gear Solid V has some of the best AI you'll ever see in the genre, to the extent where it actually adapts to your playstyle. For instance, if you're taking too many headshots to take enemies out, other enemies will get wise to your act and begin wearing helmets, forcing you to adopt new and different strategies. Eternal Darkness – The Blue Artifact at a certain point in the game, Eternal Darkness gives you a choice of picking one of three artifacts, and it's a choice that defines how the rest of the game is going to go. And if you're looking for a challenge, you should look no further than the blue artifact. Not only will this mean fighting against enemies from that point forward that do more magic damage, these enemies will also do more damage to your health and sanity meters. The blue artifact is actually recommended for repeat playthroughs, but if you unknowingly pick it on your first playthrough, you're surely in for a bit of a shock. Dishonored. Killing people. There's something incredibly satisfying about doing perfect pacifist runs in stealth games, but Dishonored not only lets you do that, it aggressively encourages it. Why? Well, thanks to the chaos mechanic, the more enemies you kill, the harder the game gets. Not only do you come up against more enemies and more rats, weepers, and what have you, your very surroundings can also fall into irrevocable chaos if you're a little too trigger happy. And with that, we reach the end of the video. Have anything to say? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we upload new videos every single day on Gaming Bolt, so please consider subscribing as it really helps us out. Thanks for watching.